Hi there. Today we're embarking on a captivating journey as we step back in time to explore the legendary TV series WKRP in Cincinnati. I'm sure many of you have fond memories of this classic show. WKRP in Cincinnati is a timeless gem that has left an indelible mark on television history. Join us as we relive the magic, revisiting the series with the entire cast, then and now. We'll uncover the original identities and ages of the talented actors from the show and witness how they've transformed in 2023. So, without further ado, let's dive into the world of WKRP in Cincinnati together. Number 1. Gary Sandy as Andy Travis Introducing Andy Travis the personification of a laid-back leader with an inner fire. At first glance, Andy seems unassuming, quietly blending into the room with his calm and approachable demeanor. In his own words, he sees himself as an easygoing guy with a natural ability to lead, a distinctive blend that distinguishes him. Yet, when confronted with employees disregarding his guidance, Andy's patience, akin to a storm on the horizon, can wear thin. His temper may erupt, demanding the attention and respect he rightfully deserves. Although Gary Sandy has had a solid career as a working actor since the early 1970s, the Ohio native will forever be best known for his one starring role as the affable but beleaguered station manager Andy Travis on the cult favorite sitcom WKRP in Cincinnati. After attending New York's American Academy of Dramatic Arts, Sandy spent much of the first half of the 1970s appearing on soap operas including Another World, As the World Turns, and Somerset, while also working in off-Broadway and Broadway shows and appearing in a few small films. In 1977, creator Hugh Wilson handpicked Sandy to portray Andy Travis, the new program director who transforms a struggling AM radio station from elevator music to rock in WKRP in Cincinnati. Playing the straight man amidst a cast of eccentric characters, Sandy navigated the chaos, including DeSaluti DJ Dr. Yoni Fever and sleazy sales manager Herb Tarlek. Despite critical acclaim, the series, unfortunately, didn't amass a large audience and concluded in 1982, post-WKRP. Sandy made appearances in TV shows and films, notably as a tobacco industry lawyer in The Insider. However, since the 1980s, he has predominantly dedicated his focus to live theater. Andy Travis was played by Gary Sandy when he was 33 years old, and now he is 77 years old. Number 2. Gordon Jump as Arthur Carlson Meet Mr. Carlson, a well-intentioned, childlike figure blissfully out of sync with the modern world. Picture him as a puppy in a room of gadgets, navigating the radio and music industry with innocent charm. With a heart of gold, he bumbles through the challenges of station management, unintentionally sparking comical chaos. Mr. Carlson's well-meaning nature takes you on a roller coaster of laughs as he stumbles through unpredictable paths. An avuncular television actor best remembered as the befuddled, middle-aged but childlike radio station boss, Arthur the Big Guy, Carlson in the television series WKRP in Cincinnati. Gordon Jump also had success in his golden years as the second actor to portray Maytag advertising icon Old Lonely, the hapless repairman with nothing to do. Then he started working constantly, including seven episodes of The Partridge Family in the early 70s. And if you haven't watched our Then and Now episode about The Partridges, go see what Susan Day and company are up to. The year before he became Arthur Carlson, he was Chief of Police Tinkler in the popular show Soap. Along with reprising his Carlson in the new WKRP, he also played Ed Malone in the wildly popular Growing Pains. One of his final gigs was in the ninth and final season of Seinfeld as George Costanza's boss at a playground equipment company over two episodes. Arthur Carlson was played by Gordon Jump when he was 46 years old. Sadly, Jump died on September 22, 2003, from pulmonary fibrosis, 
that led to respiratory failure at his home near Los Angeles, California. Number 3. Lonnie Anderson as Jennifer Marlowe While her background screams privilege, she chooses to stand with her WKRP family, forging friendships and becoming the rock everyone leans on. Her heart holds a special place for Mr. Carlson, the lovable but dependent boss. Jennifer flips the script on the dumb blonde stereotype, proving that looks can be deceiving. It irks her when judged on appearance alone, but she turns it into an opportunity to defy expectations, leaving everyone pleasantly surprised by her wit and intellect. Tall, buxom, blonde leading lady, almost exclusively on TV, best known for her amusing work as Jennifer, the perfect receptionist who inexplicably manages to live glamorously on her modest income, on the popular CBS sitcom, WKRP in Cincinnati. Following the conclusion of the show, Anderson remained actively engaged in television, participating in numerous specials, including the regular comedy variety Extravaganzas, hosted by Bob Hope, and featuring in various TV movies, often as part of remakes of classic films. She took on roles in 1980s TV adaptations of A Letter to Three Wives, Leave Her to Heaven, Three Coins in the Fountain, and Sorry, Wrong Number. Additionally, Anderson showcased her versatility by portraying classic Hollywood film stars Thelma Todd and Jane Mansfield in TV biopics. Her personal life garnered significant media attention when she married actor Burt Reynolds in 1988, with whom she had previously worked in the 1983 feature film Stroker Ace. However, the marriage ended in a highly publicized divorce in the summer of 1993. Jennifer Marlowe was played by Lonnie Anderson when she was 35 years old, and now she is 77 years old. Number 4. Howard Hesseman as Johnny Fever In the Symphony of Rebellion, they say, Music is the universal language, and Johnny Fever speaks it fluently. A rebel with a cause, he defies norms and challenges authority with every spin of a record. His wit and humor are as sharp as a guitar solo, leaving you laughing and yearning for more. Johnny Fever isn't just a rock and roll aficionado. He's a hard-on-the-sleeve kind of guy. When challenges arise for his colleagues and friends, he's the first to step up and crank up the volume in the fight. A fixture on the improv comedy scene of the 1960s, Howard Hesseman burst into the mainstream with his roguish Dr. Johnny Fever on the celebrated 1980s sitcom WKRP in Cincinnati. The quirky DJ character, earning him two Emmy nominations, marked the pinnacle of a decade-long career in features and television leading up to the role. Before that, he spent a decade as a member of the San Francisco-based comedy troupe, The Committee. Following WKRP, Hesseman ventured into another successful series, Head of the Class, which he left a year before its cancellation in pursuit of new opportunities in features. While success in films remained elusive, Hesseman maintained a steady presence on television for years after his sitcom stints and his comedic talents established him as a dependable and well-regarded character actor. Johnny Fever was played by Howard Hesseman when she was 38 years old. Unfortunately, Hesseman died from complications of colorectal surgery in Los Angeles, California on January 29, 2022, at age 81. Number 5. Richard Sanders as Les Nessman. People think of Les as the Sherlock Holmes of our newsroom. Swap the detective hat for a press badge, and you've got our accuracy wizard armed with more facts than a trivia night. He's basically our living Wikipedia, digging deep into news stories to hit you with the straight-up truth. Les crafts each word like a pro, making sure every bit of news is as sharp as a well-honed sword. His awkward moments and funny mix-ups turn our newsroom into a sitcom. Les isn't just the news guru, he's accidentally our comedy star. Buttoned-down prigs and ineffectual milk toasts have not always been actor Richard Sanders' bread and butter. He initially pursued acting at Carnegie Mellon University in the late 1950s, 
and later traveled to England on a Fulbright scholarship to study Shakespeare and theater. However, due to his nerdy appearance and diminutive stature, he found himself typecast in roles depicting docility and weakness. While he achieved brief success in feature films with small roles in hits like the war epic Midway, the teen comedy Valley Girl and Men of Honor in 2000, television became the platform where he left a lasting mark. During the 1970s, he made numerous appearances on popular shows such as Lou Grant, Kojak, The Rockford Files, and Fantasy Island. His breakthrough came with the role of bungling radio newsman Les Nessman on the highly popular WKRP in Cincinnati, where his nebbishy oddness provided a comedic contrast to the hipster DJs played by Tim Reed and Howard Hesseman, as well as the cartoon sensuality of Lonnie Anderson. Sanders went on to secure recurring roles in the 1980s on Behringer's and Spencer. He reprised the Nessman character from 1991 to 1993 on the new WKRP in Cincinnati. Additionally, he lent his voice to the animated series Batman Beyond and the video game Day of the Tentacle. Sanders made a triumphant return in the WKRP revival, displaying his comedic prowess once again, while his on-screen acting roles concluded in 2006 with the comedy film Expiration Date. His legacy, especially as Les Nessman, continues to be celebrated. Les Nessman played by Richard Sanders when he was 38 years old, and now he is 82 years old. Number six, Frank Bonner as Herb Tarlek. This guy's wardrobe is a carnival of colors and patterns, like a walking art exhibition. If fashion statements were a sport, Herb would be the undisputed champion. With his outfits that scream, look at me, Herb's on a mission to turn heads and drop jaws, especially in the eyes of the ladies. Picture this, a symphony of colors, mismatched patterns, and accessories that could rival a treasure chest. Herb's not just wearing clothes, he's making a statement, a loud and proud one. Despite the bold exterior, he's a bit like all of us, yearning for that pat on the back. The once and future Herb Tarlek from WKRP in Cincinnati, Frank Bonner, was a comic actor and director who came to personify the worst aspects of salesmanship on the critically acclaimed television comedy. Based on a real-life sales executive and acquaintance of series creator Hugh Wilson, Herb's desperation and crass behavior made him the butt of numerous jokes on the series and endeared Bonner to television audiences. After the show came to an end, he found regular work in sitcoms as both performer and director. But Herb Tarlek would remain Bonner's calling card for decades to follow. Herb Tarlek was played by Frank Bonner when he was 36 years old. Sadly, Bonner died on June 16, 2021, age 79, in Laguna Niguel, California, of complications from Louis body dementia. Number 7. Tim Reed as Venus Flytrap Venus is a maestro of the soul, communicating through the universal language of music. His velvety voice resonates deeply, curating a playlist that strikes the perfect chords and lingers in the heart. Venus has an innate ability to craft an unforgettable ambiance, urging you to dance through the night. A style icon and trendsetter, he turns heads with flamboyant outfits and accessories, embodying a walking work of art. From soul and R&B to jazz and funk, he navigates the intricate landscapes of various genres. His knowledge isn't just academic, it's a passionate affair. As he shares the stories and emotions behind each track, a profound connection blossoms with his audience. Though at times a groundbreaking, if unsung, stand-up comedian and a one-man production company, Tim Reed was forever married in the minds of television viewers as the smooth DJ, Venus Flytrap, on WKRP in Cincinnati. Reed found his way to the role after honing his comedy and acting skills in nightclubs nationwide and securing bit parts on various TV variety shows. WKRP became the breakthrough he had been seeking, and Reed embraced the opportunity committed to creating quality content for and about African Americans, 
He not only starred in but also produced acclaimed comedy series like Frank's Place and Lynx. Additionally, Reed directed several independent features with the historical drama Once Upon a Time When We Were Colored standing out. Known for his dedication to mature and intelligent content, coupled with his easygoing comic talents, Reed became a beloved and distinguished figure in the entertainment industry. Venus Flytrap was played by Tim Reed when he was 34 years old, and now he is 78 years old. Number 8. Jan Smithers as Bailey Quarters With her bookish and nerdy persona, Bailey is the station's intellectual maestro, She's a connoisseur of knowledge, diving deep into literature, history, and even the realms of science and technology. Her love for learning is palpable, manifested in an extensive vocabulary and insightful contributions to discussions. In the midst of the radio station's chaotic environment, Bailey emerges as the voice of reason. Her calm and level-headed approach serves as a stabilizing force, balancing out the eccentricities of her colleagues and harmonizing the workplace. We last witnessed her on screen in the 1987 comedy Mr. Nice Guy, after which she gracefully retired from acting. From 1986 to 1995, she was happily married to actor James Brolin, and the two share a daughter named Molly Elizabeth. Jan, now 73, finds joy in traveling, particularly to India. In a recent interview, she shared, I learned to meditate there, and I changed a great deal. Smithers has been a devoted traveler to India for 16 consecutive years, evolving into an advocate for wellness and spirituality. James Brolin was her husband. Bailey Quarters was played by Jan Smithers when she was 29 years old, and now she is 74 years old. Number 9. Carol Bruce as Lillian Carlson Lillian Carlson, a formidable force in her own right, is portrayed as a strong-willed and independent woman. Her sharp tongue and fearless expression of opinions make it clear that she doesn't back down easily. Lillian exudes a no-nonsense attitude, standing firm in her convictions without being easily swayed by others' opinions or influences. The dynamic between Lillian and Arthur is a blend of support, tough love, and occasional exasperation. In the intricate dance of their relationship, Lillian's strength and independence shine, adding a layer of complexity to the narrative. Bruce embarked on her career as a singer in the late 1930s, alongside Larry Clinton and his band. She lent her vocals to Ben Burney's orchestra in 1940-1941. Making her mark on Broadway, Bruce debuted in Louisiana Purchase, featuring songs by Irving Berlin, who discovered her at a nightclub in Newark, New Jersey. Notably, she became the first actress to take on the role of Julie in a Broadway production of Jerome Kern and Oscar Hammerstein II's Showboat since the 1932 Broadway revival. Bruce portrayed the character on stage in 1946, earning favorable comparisons to Helen Morgan, the original actress who had played the role in 1927 and reprised it in both the 1932 revival and the 1936 film. Among her other Broadway credits are New Priorities of 1943, Along Fifth Avenue, 1949, Do I Hear a Waltz, Henry, Sweet Henry, and A Family Affair. Lillian Carlson played by Carol Bruce. When she was 60 years old, Bruce died from chronic obstructive pulmonary disease at the Motion Picture and Television Country House and Hospital in Woodland Hills, California, aged 87. Number 10. Alan Ann McClary as Carmen. Carlson Catress. Alan Ann McClary transitioned from early Broadway success to a lengthy career as a character actor on television. Originally from Quebec, she garnered attention on the stage in 1948 when she starred alongside Ray Bolger in Frank Loser's musical Where's Charlie at the age of 21. While continuing her Broadway career, McClary expanded into screen work during the 1950s. She reprised her role opposite Bolger in the film adaptation of Where's Charlie? and took supporting roles in musicals like The Desert Song, 1953, and Calamity Jane, 1953. 
After marrying actor George Gaines, McCleary took breaks from acting but returned with a notable role in Sidney Pollock's dance marathon drama, They Shoot Horses, Don't They, 1969, starring Jane Fonda. This marked the beginning of a series of roles, particularly as a guest performer on television drama such as Cannon and The Waltons. She later became a series regular on The Tony Randall Show, portraying the straight-laced secretary to Randall's widowed judge. Following the show's conclusion, she returned to television with guest roles before appearing in the hit miniseries The Thorn Birds, 1983. McClary had recurring roles on WKRP in Cincinnati as the wife of station manager Arthur Carlson, Gordon Jump, and on Punky Brewster, which starred her husband George Gaines. She earned critical acclaim as part of the cast of Jay Tarsus's groundbreaking dramedy, The Days and Nights of Molly Dodd, playing the hard-to-please mother of Blair Brown's title character. She retired from acting shortly after the series concluded, with her final role being an uncredited appearance in her husband's film, Police Academy, Mission to Moscow. McClary was married to the lyricist from 1945 until their divorce in May 1953. She was also married to actor George Gaines from 1953 until he died in 2016. The couple had two children, Matt Gaines and Aya Gaines Falcone Brown. Carmen Carlson was played by Alan Ann McClary when she was 53 years old. Sadly, McClary died at her home in North Bend, Washington, on May 21, 2018, at the age of 91, from Alzheimer's disease. As we reflect on the incredible journey of the WKRP in Cincinnati, cast from 1978 to 1982, witnessing their growth and transformations, it's evident that the bond forged during those years has left an enduring legacy. From thrilling highway pursuits to heartwarming moments, these actors brought the California Highway Patrol to life. Their stories continue to resonate with fans around the world. As we explore their then and now, we celebrate the enduring impact of WKRP in Cincinnati. Thank you for joining us on this nostalgic trip down the California highways with the remarkable WKRP in Cincinnati of yesteryear.